Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? I hope you're doing great. Today we're going to talk about something really important and really interesting, and it's going to be about dividing your program up into separate files. And often we want to create several different classes that have different duties, right, that can do different things, and then we want to just create all of those in one file, in a separate file. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a class called dice and this dice is going to be able to be rolled. It's going to have a value and stuff and we'll be able to create several different dice from this class, right? Just like we've been doing before. We've been creating classes in the uh, main file, right? Now we're just going to do that separately, but it will still work the same. So don't worry about it. But the first thing you need in order to create a class in a separate file is a header file for that class. So you want to create a new item and a header file like this and you want to name this header file your class's name so I'm gonna name it dice dice.h now one thing I want you guys and girls to know is that in the h file you can create definitions and the the uh, what do you call it uh, the actual class and its definitions I'm sorry yeah in the h file you don't need a cpp file directly but it's good to have one alright there are a few examples with classes where you can only do it in the h file and those are called template classes but we'll talk about that later but for now we're going to create an h file and a cpp file okay so i'm just going to create this h file and a new item cpp file uh, dice it's going to have the same name so dice.h and dice.cpp and for those of you who saw that you can make a class wizard you can use that if you want and then it will create all of this for you automatically but let's start off with the H file. So if you're running um, Visual Studio or Codeblocks or something, you can use Pragma once. And some nice guys and grails in uh, in the comment sections helped me out on this. I thought this was only for Visual Studio, but I was wrong. So you can try this out. It makes your life a little easier. But what this does, it only lets this H file be included once. So when I go into main and I write include dice.h which now pops up here since I have a dice.h and you have to do this in order to access this class uh, once I write this if I do that several times I don't want this file to be run several times okay I don't want it I just want it to be run once and once it has been included anywhere in the program I don't want it ever to be included in this program again until I rerun the program alright so because that can double define stuff and you don't want that imagine defining two integers of the same name right that doesn't work because you can't define something with the same name twice this is a safety for that for the class so when you make your class here class dice just like we always do in the h file um, we'll have our private section and our public section you don't want this to be defined twice so then you have pragma once it's a safety it just says if this is defined once don't do it again and there is an old school way of doing it and that is the if and def if not defined define this keyword so define dice h now you don't have to have exactly this keyword you can have whatever as long as these two that i'm gonna do here are the same but this makes it easier because that's a file's name and we'll keep it as the file's name. So if not defined, define dice h and then end if. So what this does is if, this is a if statement but with a preprocessor, preprocessor directive. That's what this is with the hashtag and the, uh, and the same thing with the include, include uh, string for example. If we just include string here, um, whoops. I don't know what the hell I just did there. Okay, preprocessor directive, right? That's the same thing. It's just a different thing. So this is a if statement in that type, in the preprocessor type. Um, so what that does is defines this if it's not been defined. And if it's not been defined, we'll do this and we'll do all of this stuff here and we'll go down to the end if. If it is defined, then obviously we won't do this again and we'll just skip everything and go to the end if. So it's a safety. It only does this once. Every time you include the file, it won't matter how many times you include it. It will just do it once. Okay, just to make it as clear as possible. Uh, but you can use Pragma once if you want. So I'm just going to use Pragma once. I'm going to comment all of this out. Because I don't want this in my laugh. Um, and I'll include string and I'll do all that stuff. Whatever. So we ha we'll have our class dice here. Now I'm going to have a private int 
value and we're going to use a const int value because we're talking about initializer list in the previous video so we're going to use that but we want a string as well let's say we have a std string color okay now we're going to initialize these two so we'll have a dice constructor like this and we're going to have a int uh, constant value and a const std string color now we want these to be able to be set from the outside when we create a dice but we're going to give them something called default values so if they're not set they'll just have this value by default but if you set them to something else uh, manually then they'll be set to that value but otherwise they'll be six for example but and one other rule here I want you guys and girls to remember is when you're setting default values if you set one every variable coming after that every parameter needs a default value but not before it so if I have something if I only set color to a default value here black value doesn't need a default value alright but anything after the color parameter will need one so just remember that it's a really important rule uh, so if you get any errors here just make sure you you check that but then I just set some default values here no problem we'll have a uh, dice these structure as well then we need some accessors we need some modifiers and we need some functions okay so accessors what do we need we want to be able to get the value and the color so const int reference get value const okay and we will do some stuff here inline and we're just gonna define this right in here so you don't really need the inline thingy but uh, I usually have it when I optimize this stuff I don't really know too much about it to tell you I will read on read up on it I promise and I'll, I'll tell you guys and girls about it if anyone knows inline better I don't want to teach you anything wrong so please just write that in the comment section if you can but until then I'll, I'll check it out I'll read a little more about it uh, return this value that's all you want to do in here and I'll just copy this and I'll paste it and I'll say get color and this isn't gonna be inline const int it's gonna be std string and const return this color easy as that one two three no problems now we can't create a set modifier for value because it's a constant you can never set a constant right it's only set once now I want to tell you guys like in the last video I hope you remember that we can set this value here equals wait what is what the hell is going on wait uh, I think I did something wrong here there you go so we can't set it here we can set it here but it, it won't then it won't matter I mean the thing is we want to be able to set it from here so we can give it different values so I'm just gonna leave that blank and we'll use the initializer list uh, but like I said we can't modify this so we'll just make one for this one uh, void set color const std string color and we'll make this uh, a inline as well and this is going to be this color equals color easy as that so we can set the color manually now for function all we need is a toss function so we we'll want to be able to have a dice and we want to be able to toss it so what that is going to do is this oh whoops um, const int toss const that's it that's all it's going to do but we're not going to define it in here this is going to be defined outside so we'll have a mix of different things so some of these are defined in here some of these are defined in the cpp file so to make it a little easier i'm going to set the dice.h to the side here and i'm going to have the cpp file here so the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have your h file ready like this kind of like a template for your class and then you want to include it include dice.h so we can start defining stuff so now dice.h is included here and everything else I included will come with it now we need to make definitions we need to define the constructor destructor and the toss function so the destructor dice dice just like we did before no different actually it's no different one thing you want to remember is you want, don't want to really give it default values in here as well um, I'll try to do it and I'll show you guys and girls what happens this is complaining because we need an initializer list for our constant 
variable value. Okay, so for that, I'm just going to increase this here. I'm going to do a initializer list value is value. Now I can do color color here as well, but in order or for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to do this color equals color. So to show you the difference, like we talked about in the last video. Now I want to create the constructor as well. Dice. Nothing special, just a body. And then we're going to define the function here. So what was the function? It was toss, right? Const int dice toss. Don't forget the dice colon colon when you define them in another file like this. But in here, if you define them in here, you don't have to do that. But here, it needs to know that this toss function is coming from this class and I'm defining it here. So that's why you need to have that. Const. And the definition is right here. All this is going to do is it's going to return a random value of this value. But what rand does here is it actually randomizes this not from 1 to 6 like we would want to if it's a six sided dice. Um, we want to, it would give you 0 to 5, and we don't want that. So I'm just going to do plus 1 here. So whatever this random value gives us, plus 1. So that will do, that will convert 0 to 5 from from 0 to 5 to 1 to 6. So you just want to do that. Just like that. No problem. Um, good and good. Now our class is ready, kind of, right? See? It's ready and it's nice. Now if I have our default values in the H file and the CPP file, I just want, to, just want you to observe if we get any errors. Um, dice d6. Let's start with a d6. And I'm not going to give it any parameters. Just totally empty. And we want to do C out std c out d6 see it's not showing up you want to just remove these two parameters these two parentheses if you're not going to give it any values remove the parentheses because it's not a function or anything like that then d6 will show up and then you can do toss and then new line okay and we want our system pause so i just want to see if we get any errors from this having these both of these uh, thing is yeah redefinition of default value so if you ever get this error just remember that you might have just defined these default values twice so you don't want to do that in the cpp file you just want to remove that really quickly so you don't have that in the cpp file and you only have it in the h file see how i have them here right so just remember that if you get this error just make sure you check that out so if i run this again it should work and we get a six we get a 6. And the reason we got a 6 and we'll always get a 6 is because I forgot to include C time, which you always want to do if you want to have random values. S rand, let's initialize C time. Um, time static cast uh, unsigned 0. I know this is a mouthful <laughs> and a lot of type, but just remember, if you want random values, make sure you set the seed to time. You can just do zero, but static cast and sign makes it a little more clean, a little more, a little more accurate, helps the computer out. Um, so that's good. So now we got three and all that stuff. Now say that we want a D6 or D12. See, we didn't give this any values, but it knows that it's a six because we gave it a default value. But if I do a dice D12 then obviously I want to give it a 12 here and maybe it's not black maybe it's red okay so the next time I'm gonna do a C out here I'm gonna do a d12 toss and I'm also gonna print color like this and then d12 get color like that and I'm just gonna run this so we're gonna get a d6 and then we're gonna get an 8 value from the other one and color red. See how that worked? So now we created a class in the dice.cpp and the dice.h and that helped us make several different dice in our game. Imagine this being a, a dice game, right? If you just have a d6 and anyone that rolls 10 sixes wins or something like whatever. You're making a dice game and you can create it several different dice through this one class and you created it separately so it, it doesn't clog up your main file see we just included dice here so I hope you followed me on this tutorial I hope you've, it's been good and, and uh, you've, you've learned anything and uh, and yeah just play around with this make diff different classes and, and uh, 
that's how you learn. You just got to play around with it. But thank you so much for watching. I hope I went through everything. Pretty sure I gave you all the tips and tricks that you want to look out for here. Um, yeah, don't forget this semicolon either. Don't forget the define and if stuff or pragma once. And don't do, don't uh, forget to include dice in the CPP file either. So yeah, that should be it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to just drop a like or subscribe, you can do that. That would mean the whole world to me. Otherwise, just watching means everything as well. So thank you so much. Um, there are a bunch of links in the description. You can check out playlists, support page, all that stuff. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate the support of all you guys and girls. So yeah, thank you so much. Take care. Keep learning. And I'll see you guys and girls in the next one, right? Bye-bye.